The AI sector in crypto is still one of the most undervalued sectors available to invest in. In fact, there are still cryptocurrencies in the top five that have bigger evaluations as far as market cap than the entire AI cryptocurrency sector. You can even compare the evaluations of altcoins like BNB to anthropic centralized AI company. So if you like these type of videos, make sure that you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and keep your favorite crypto and door-to-door -door entrepreneur inside the algorithms. What's shockingly interesting is that you can see some of the AI leaders compared to early internet era evaluations. So in 1997, the internet Amazon IPO was around 500 million. Today it sits at 1.7 trillion. 2004, you had the Google IPO, again, internet narrative, 23 billion, today it sits at 1.8 trillion. In 2024, you had the open AI evaluation, which currently sits at about $80 billion. You already know that's only going to get bigger. And Anthropic sits at a mere $15 billion dollar evaluation and with BitTensor sitting at a mere 3.3 billion dollar market evaluation i think that there's massive potential ai big data the entire sector still can't clear usdc which is stablecoin solana which is a meme coin paradise similar to a casino and bnb I mean, what does BNB even do? This is why I truly believe that we have a massive opportunity when it comes to the BitTensor ecosystem and some of the many companies that's building within the BitTensor ecosystem. This is ex this is exactly what you're looking for as an AI investor, right? Putting yourself in the position to find, you know, applications that are severely undervalued, right? That can help usher uh, artificial intelligence into truly a an area where it can be adopted. I think having an understanding of where to invest in artificial intelligence plays a major impact on your gains and the potential of your portfolio. I personally like to focus on infrastructure. I made it easy for you guys because this is the infrastructure bottleneck strategy that will create a massive opportunity in AI. First and foremost, GPU chips, staggering six to 12 month wait times for cutting edge AI hardware with each H100 GPU costing about $25,000 on the open market. Cloud compute. And again, these GPU chips are, are scarce, right? So if you don't have a plug, you most likely got to wait six to 12 months, right? Um, the funny thing about this is now we're seeing cloud compute and, and, and GPU and chips and things like that being uh, a shared right through sharing um, team, you know, crowd sharing, should I say, uh, allowing an opportunity for this specific sector to be more decentralized. So if you got tools, you can lend them out and people can contribute to the ecosystem by renting out those tools. So I, I really, really like the opportunity here, especially with GPU chips and cloud compute. Um, cloud compute is like the electricity for AI, right? You got data storage, data, <laughs> but you people truly sleep on the data aspect of crypto, right? And, and, and it doesn't just start, stop at like, oh, the data, right? Guess what? Robo taxis, they'll have to use data. Uh, uh, these physical robots that will be working around, they'll have to use spatial data where it, everything has to be mapped out, right? You also have the uh, the um, sensors, right? The sensors for artificial intelligence. This allows AI to feel, to have understanding of a physical, you know, in IRL, right? To have an understanding of what happens in IRL, whether it be senses compar comparable to humans. So like the data narrative is so important to the artificial intelligence narrative. And when you kind of put all of these, you know, niches together, this builds the infrastructure of AI. And to break down why I've chose to invest into the infrastructure of AI, I actually put this thing into core, four core uh, uh, POIs that everybody can understand. So these are the four pillars of AI infrastructure, right? Um, for example, compute power functions as the brain, enabling complex processing through distributed GPU networks. This is why compute power is so important, and this is why 
Everybody is trying to create a decentralized way to serve compute power, right? Data storage acts as the memory, housing massive training data sets in facilitating real-time processing. Uh, spatial data provides the visual perception system, creating 3D mapping for robot navigation and autonomous systems. I'm smiling because this is why I'm invested into projects like Jasmine that help harness this data. And when we think about data, now we're talking about um uh autonomous cities right uh <laughs> you got to really get into the whole iot thing but you know you're already starting to see robo taxis right guess what in order to for these taxis to be able to drive and understand navigation right they need to have this mapped out and this is why spatial data is probably one of the most cr crucial parts of the infrastructure of artificial intelligence is why people shouldn't sleep on a yuki uh ai sensors serve as the peripheral nervous system collecting real-time data through iot networks these four pillars work in harmony to inform the complete infrastructure needed for ai to reach its full potential which apparently we're heading to the area of a uh, agi right so we need compute power data storage spatial data and ai sensors right ai sensors serve as the nervous system correct collecting real-time data through iot networks so when you hear smart cities smart this smart that smart you know what i mean traffic lights right all of that requires data and this is why data is one of the pillars of ai infrastructure of course there's risk with bittensor tau subnets but I believe there's truly an opportunity here. Um, these are some of the pros to be able to, you know, com you know, comparing the tensor subnets to traditional AI companies, right? So the centralized AI infrastructure ownership, which is giving uh, indie devs an opportunity to compete with these big centralized companies. Um, Token-based liquidity investments gets the small guy like us an opportunity to get in at VC levels, right? Normally you can't invest into these AI companies if you don't got the plug, right? You can't even, you couldn't have got into uh, Anthropic in its early stages, Google in its early stages, but with BitTensor, they're allowing you a an opportunity to play as a VC. So many people ask, well, why aren't these subnets um, have high valuation? When you look at something like Chooch, you would assume that this should be a billion dollar project. When you look at Dippy and and what they're doing over there with Ridges AI, Subnet 62 and Gradients and, and Subnet 51, you know, so many subnets that are, are building things that are generational, but just quite haven't been adopted or people just don't know about it. So we're in the early adoption phase. Most investors don't understand the Tensor ecosystem. Technical complexity creates information as asymmetry and market discovery is still happening. Liquidity is a huge thing. And this is why it's cool that we're starting to see these bridges to Solana and base. Uh, limited exchange listings is also a technical barrier. And a lot of people don't understand how to create a miner, right? A lot of these miners are not low code. So there's also a barrier when, you know, developers try to figure out how to navigate across the potential ecosystem and really understand how to create a, a miner, right? So lack of that, causes a uh, lack of institutional investment infrastructure market education gap traditional ai investments are unfamiliar with crypto mechanisms that's a big thing crypto investors learning ai fundamentals missing bridge between the community so you know crypto investors are trying to learn ai right traditional investors are trying to understand crypto so we need to bridge that that you know that section there and of course regulatory uncertainty where what's the classification of these subnets, right? Will they be viewed like memes or will they be viewed like utility tokens? I think that's something that's not really talked about as much, but these barriers create the opportunity. Early investors can position before mainstream. There's many tools that you can utilize to find really, really good subnets within the BitTensor ecosystem. I personally like stuff like TauStats.io, was sponsored a few of my videos, but also Backdrop. I use Backdrop because it really allows me to understand each sector that I'm investing in. You got model development, you got inference, which is huge to infrastructure. You got the AI agents within BitTensor. You got compute power, which again, I think is huge when you think about, you know, the electricity for AI really to survive. It's like you can't drive your Tesla if you don't fucking charge it up excuse my language you got DeFi, uh data pipelines another website that i, I like to use and i believe they will be changing 
the hosting name, which is uh, this was created by Tensor, but they are creating their own personal website. But this shows the mind share of these subnets, right? Which subnets have the most mind share? These are the subnets that people are most interested in, right? Um, you can see a couple of the ones that I actually hold are on this list. Bitcast subnet 93 sitting here at three, which is the creator's economy, allowing creators and even companies that want marketing, um, everything to be done in a decentralized way and a way that's tracked by AI and analytics where you can't cheat the system. Really, really like BitCast because we are entering an attention common economy when everything is about content creation. This is gonna be huge for the marketing aspect of BitTensor. I also like Dippy, uh, Subnet 11, and a few other of these subnets that are listed in the top 20 of Mindshare, some of the subnets that I personally hold also have investments from the subnet hedge fund DSV, which have a, which those guys have a very, very cool podcast where you can learn a lot about the Bitensor ecosystem. Another tool I like to use is the Tau Treasury app at taotreasuries.app, which tracks the institutional investments into Tau, basically the Tau Treasury companies, right? The Tau Treasury companies and um, you know, you know how much, you know, capital, right, has been invested into Bitensor from an institutional um, standpoint. And you're still early when you think about the tokenomics of Tau and how it's comparable to Bitcoin. Buying Tau at 342 342 bucks and 10 years from now maybe it's sitting at twenty thousand dollars or something crazy you know what i mean you look back and kind of understand of you know how you know we were in the infant stages of artificial intelligence so definitely check out dsv i put the link to their socials and everything in the description um dsv dsv at dsv fund you can see they're putting multiple allocations otc into the subnets that they feel have the most potential right they just recently put two hundred thousand dollars into subnet 11 that is one of my uh subnets that i hold and you know they're building ai companions and things like that and if we go back here you can see that they also made an investment into one of my favorite subnets of course which is subnet 93 where they did a 50, I believe a 50,000 uh, uh, OTC investment into subnet 93. We'll check out uh, their podcast, right? Because they actually connect with some of the founders. I think, you know, this is one of the uh, the um, uh, pod pods right here where they talk to the founder of subnet 62. Subnet 62 is going to be huge. They also did a pod with BitCast, right? Um, so make sure you go check out the pod that they also did with BitCast and a few more subnets. You can learn a lot from these uh, podcasts because these guys, man, it, I can't context and conceptualize some of the things that happen in BitTensor, but they can. And even myself watching these subnets, I learned something new about not just BitTensor or Tau, but about AI in the future of artificial intelligence. So I'll be sure to put all of the links in the description of DSV and their podcast the name of their podcast is revenue search the market is red but i gotta get up out of here and continue my research like i said check out dsv i think that that's a great resource for you to learn about subnets remember right now these subnets may feel very undervalued and and you you probably wonder why the evaluation is so low guys this is the early stages of AI in general. AI infrastructure creates a powerful flywheel effect that drives exponential value creation. As more compute capacity becomes available, AI models improve dramatically, which enables more diverse applications. These applications generate vast amounts of data that improve spatial understanding, leading to a more capable robot and autonomous system. The cycle creates even greater demand for compute resources, completing the value creating loop. The network is the key driver behind the massive potential returns in AI. So you see how compute power and data and everything about AI creates a flywheel to where it can only grow and grow and grow and be adopted. And what do you think is going to happen to our portfolio and our investment specifically within BitTensor and some of these subnets? They're only going to grow, grow and grow. I did a, 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 a AI investment analysis of the specific sectors 
within the infrastructure. And you can see here, this is what my model told me. Um, compute network shows strong 100x potential due to severe global GPU shortage and exponential demand growth. Sensor networks could deliver a 75x returns as physical digital in interfaces multiply, while data networks offer a solid 50x potential as AI training data sets become increasingly valuable. Early investors in fundamental infrastructure historically capture the highest return in any technology revolution. This is an opportunity to position yourself. Do more research. Do more research. Double down on your thesis. Double down on your strategy. Let me know what y'all think about BitTensor, the subnets. Have a look at DSV, Revenue Search, and their podcast, and check out some of the resources and tools that I will link in the description. Subnet 11, Subnet 62, Subnet 93, some of my favorites. Go check them out. It's your boy, Crypto Millie. I'll see you in the next one.